My name is Jocko van der Kooi. I'm the founder and co-CEO of Winning by Design. And today I'm going to share with you some of the best practices needed for the upcoming kickoff starting at the beginning of 2021. I'm going to share some of the best practices. What have we seen out there that works and doesn't work? I'm going to share these best practices and I'm going to do that in two stages. I'm going to first and foremost share some of the tips. What are the things that we see out there that works? How do they work? What can we do? What can we copy? And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the innovative ways of doing things. I want you to think of like us not having an annual kickoff or not even calling them sales kickoffs, but just having frequent and regular meetings. How can we make those meetings more common, more frequent, more engaging and whatnot? What I want to let you know is like, I want you to think about like, what is the objective? What is your audience? And as we look towards January and February, where many of these kick kickoffs are taking place, we have to understand that our audience is fatigued. They are tired. They feel often overwhelmed with all the things going on around them, socially, economically, health-wise. I politically, I mean, it feels fatiguing as we come to the end of this year. It is almost like we're scratching and clawing us. That is the mindset of the audience. What, they, what we are looking for and what many of us are looking for is let's get happy again. Let's look to the exciting future, the bright future we have ahead of us. And the great thing about the happiness, COVID is not the only thing that is contagious. Happiness is also very contagious. It spreads. People want to feel happy. This is one of the key objectives of our kickoff in January and February, to make this happiness feeling, this vi a bright vision of the future, to spread that. And the great news is we can do that remotely. We don't have to touch each other. We can do this remotely. That is the exciting part of that. Now, with that said, I want you to think that this annual kickoff that we normally call sales kickoff and so on and so forth shouldn't be annual. It should be frequent. I'm just going to hone in on the one that starts at the beginning of, of January and February, where many of you who are out there listening right now go like, I have a meeting coming up in January. I got a one day, two day or three day event. Now, what I want you to think about is the worst thing that you can do is copy the historic agenda and just slap a remote session on top of it. WebEx, uh, Zoom, uh, team meetings, uh, uh, Microsoft Teams, and so on and so forth. And they go like, hey, we're going to use that medium to do the same thing. It won't work, people. It won't. And so what we're going to do instead is I'm going to show you what we are going to do and how we're going to do it. First and foremost, we can no longer see it as a standalone event. Oh, it's gonna be on January, whatever, 14th, and that's the day. What is taking place is that we need to think about what happens before. Now, what happens before three to four weeks, we need to involve the people who we are presenting to. Involvement creates commitment. If we don't involve them, then they're not gonna be committed to it. A great way of involving them is sending out a basic questionnaire as simple as, how did you like the last session that we had, the last kickoff? What did you like from it? And there's a list of like 20 things you did. Pick the three things you liked the most. Uh, what would you like to see during upcoming session, right? And then you give them either a pick list or an open write inbox and then ask over the past three months, what was a colleague, what is a remarkable thing that you see your colleague do? That letter is an open, that last one is an open, an open bo text box that we can use during the session in order to highlight every now and then you know, like, oh my gosh, you know, in between sessions, while we we're moving from product presentation to sales presentation, I want to highlight this particular person who did this amazing job was recommended by this person. Again, happiness. Another way of work that you can do before is sharing an asynchronous video, a recorded video that, and have them watch it. And at the outcome of that, ask them a few questions. These are varied, varied ways of doing the before. But what you do is you set the stage. This involvement creates commitment. What happens during the event, we're going to talk a lot more about, but the key about that is all about engagement, engagement, engagement. How do we engage people? And then finally, the last part is, and the key part in this particular situation is, what is your goal? 
Now, I assume down here in this particular example that the goal is productivity. Because when I look at these, you know, like this, this session, this horizontally is the time of the year, I see that there's a lot of activity that we generate down here. We generate a lot of buzz. But why we do that? We want to make sure that there's productivity that we deliver again. That's the stuff we want, right? You look at it. That is the productivity we want in this case. Now, if you want people to have a uniform vision, right, that is fine too. Whatever your goal is, in this case, productivity, make sure that that goal is not different from what you did during the session or before the session. The goal needs to be all along the same thing. This shared goal that you tackle with the thing that happens before, for example, the questionnaire, if vision is my key goal, then I want to learn about, oh my gosh, what did you like about the last year's goal? If productivity is the goal, then you might want to ask in your questionnaire up front, what are the three things that help you be most productive? And looking forward, what are some of the tools you've seen out there that you would like the company to consider to helping you become more productive? And then during the session, you need to talk about that. We learned from you, these are the tools you want. We learned from you, these are the tools successful. Here's a few best practices on how you can use these tools. Now you see productivity and the use of tools is a consistent theme. This is the key because as we were doing more and more of these remote events, we want to make sure that they are connected with each other. I want you to realize also that there's a time limitation. For example, if you want to do this in January, I want to give you a heads up that most likely you already need to send this before work out as early as December, middle of December, a week before we are looking at the holidays. So keep that in mind. Same thing after. There's a lot of times that we easily lose that we don't think about. And we do need a little bit of time in between because we cannot send you know, a survey and expect people to answer within 24 hours or something like that. Now let's start. This is the exciting part. Let's start with what happens during the session, okay? Now this is the part, you know, like where I'm always excited about because it allows to get everybody engaged. <laughs> okay, settle down, settle down. Okay, what we see is that what we are looking at, if you're looking at an, 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 this annual kickoff at the start of January to kick off the year, we want you to think and make sure that you spread it out over multiple days. We want you to make sure that you limit it to a certain amount of hours per day. We have seen that fatigueness occurs quickly once you start passing the three hour mark. Doesn't mean that you cannot do it four hours, just be aware that you're in treacherous terrain. Anything over four hours and you're gonna see a steep decline in engagement. At three, the decline starts, at four it is occurring, and at five and six, you are talking about like retention value zero. You have to bring in a lot of entertainment to retain that. Adoption of the content is becoming less and less. So what we do instead, we spread this out over multiple days. Now, if you want to have, you want to launch new product, for example, you want to talk about the new mission and vision, and you want to share the results of 2000 uh, last year, 2020 in this case, you may move those to different days. So people know on Monday, we're going to look back and see some of the highlights. On Tuesday, we're going to talk about new products and so on. And on Wednesday, we're going to talk about some of the new skills, tools, and techniques we're using and best practices. Each of these three hours, however, needs to be rethought. We need to rethink how we're going to do that. And this is the part where I like to elaborate, say like, look, the three main goals that you have with each of these sessions is, do you educate, can you educate somebody? Can you entertain them or do, can you motivate them? Now, the point that I point out down here, it, it doesn't need to be 100% education. When you get 100% education, it may be right, but it better be by the best TED speaker on earth who is an expert in their field. That education can be great. But most of the times, education can be boring. Now, if I include a little bit of entertainment with the education, then suddenly, your know, life comes a lot more fun, right? I can add a little song to it. And now I can educate and suddenly, you know, based on this background, it becomes a little bit more entertaining. I do not know whether that music is the right song, but you get the idea. The second thing is motivation is super important. We want to make sure that when we depict a vision of the future, it is an exciting uh, vision. 
these three variables, education, entertainment, and motivation, are three variables that vary by the size of your audience. The bigger the audience, you know, if I think about Resultatus Digitais event, uh, annual event a year, where there's 10 plus thousand people, entertainment, super high, because there's so many people with a varied background and interest. If the audience is smaller, then you're gonna in generally make education a lot higher, more direct engagement. When the, and the smaller mean 10, 20, 30 people. If it's somewhere between 20 and 50 to 60 people, you probably see a reasonable amount of education and a reasonable amount of motivation with a little bit of entertainment. Again, on the top end, large audiences, you often see an increase in entertainment in order to engage that many people with that varied interest. What we see here on that three hours, in, in this three hour session, you're gonna split that up on average in 20 minute se sessions. Think of these as TED sessions. These sessions essentially include, can include to engage them, you know, like real time surfing. So I'll give you an example of real time surfing. I can now go down here, you see me on the screen, and I go like top 10 TED videos or TED talks, right? and I'm gonna get the list. And while I surf down here, I engage you because you go like, what does he see? And now you of course wanna see what it is. So I'm gonna give you that payoff as well. Okay, here's the top 10 TEDx talks. Okay, there you have them. So now what we see, we're engaging and you see me do it. This gives a real time feeling. This is the reason why when kids playing uh, gaming uh, can watch other kids play games as well, and they can watch it for hours. It's because of that real time engagement. Okay. That is a specific technique that we can use. Now, going back, that real-time surfing and how engaging that is, there's other ways, to, many other ways there, that we can engage uh, uh, with. Next one up is when you go somewhere on a topic, don't hesitate to go deep. This is the time that you go deep, but prepare the content, explain them the deep, ask the questions, engage in the conversation. This is a key way. When you go deep, get them to understand you got your audience right now. Limit any form of PowerPoint. I cannot say this enough. Historically, most presenters have heavily relied on PowerPoint as a, as a crutch that held them up. So we got to rethink the active use of PowerPoint. The way how PowerPoint allows you to create great visual is wonderful. But as a crutch, it often has taken away from the ability of the speaker to talk to the topic. So I want you to make sure that if a person is a boring talker and a, you know leads to you know death by PowerPoint. Then online, it's gonna be way worse because there's so much other things that are drawing a person's attention. They're gonna be checking their email and so on and so forth. Now, a quick trick in order to to avoid that they're going to do something like that is I can use certain sound samples to bring them back, and by bringing them back, I can create a certain level of excitement, a certain amount of energy, and that is what I'm looking for. So, for example, if I say like, "Oh my gosh, I want to make sure that you limit your PowerPoint," okay, I bet you I got your attention right now. Now, that is an air horn that allows me to do that, like, or I can implement a car engine. Look, I know this sounds in historically, when we were presenting in front of an audience, we were taught to limit any of these sound samples. I agree, I thought it was annoying. I got people right now, if we got 40, 50, 60 people attending, they are looking at your screen, they got the text messages buzzing, they are like everything going on. If you wanna draw their attention back and say like, hey, y'all like, this is an appointment point, this will draw their attention because they were doing something else, okay? This is a form. Now, whether you should go as loud as an air horn, I do not know. There's way better, way more in, you know, effective ways of doing that that probably synchronize with your content, right? That seem in line with your content. That is what I'm trying to indicate as an indication. Don't, you know, the air horn, I know is sometimes dogs go nuts about that, by the way. Okay, what you also want to do is you wanna make sure that you practice beforehand that the, all the speakers have practiced this. Does it fit in the a lot of time? Going over time is a huge issue in remote. It makes it feel like, oh, people stay longer. No, they can't because our personal lives are interfering. In today's session, I got my daughter that needs to be dropped off at you know, like her sports classes. I got a son that needs to be picked up here and there. You can't just say it's three hours and then, oh my gosh, you can stay for three and a half. No, you need to practice. And the way how people practice this, you need to ask all your presenters to record themselves 
for the 20 minutes and send the video in advance. You want to see it. Use your particular screen uh, uh, share technique. Just hit record and I want to see if it fits in there. And this final one on this particular slide. Give five minutes breaks or uh, per hour. It is super critical for people to have time and opportunity to go to the bathroom, to get a grab of drink, to just stretch their legs, whatever it is. Now what you see what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a trick on how to do that. I'm going to go to my window and down here I simply type in and my screen is being shared five minute timer. And what you're going to get, you're going to standard five minute timer and it's going to start. Now when it comes down at the end it starts buzzing. Okay, and so that will create that bus kind of feel and excitement to it. Now, um, what I can do as well, I can set the custom type. What, what else can I do, Jocko? Okay, five minute timer, video. Let's see what we get there. Oh, now I get a series of videos. So let's say I run this video. Now I got this video playing and as that video countdown occurs, I, you know, like the screen can be full. Now I can map this to a full screen experience. And then when I create that full screen experience, the music will stop at a certain point in time. Okay, that is a way how you can create a time. And now watch what happens when the music stops. People start paying attention. Silence can be deafening. And so that is a way on how we can create engagement using a timer and how we would engage people with that. Um, Next one up, what else can we do? What I'm going to show you now is you at this point in time goes like, oh my gosh, how does he do all that? I'm going to disclose a little bit to you on how we create these engaging experiences that you see in front of you with the simplest of the simplest things, okay? So what I'm going to depict to you is how we create this specific experience. Now, as I uncloak our setup, Get ready because you will be surprised. Okay, what you see down here is essentially a Google slide presentation. And this Google slide presentation, as I map it to the particular screen, is a, a presentation that is mapped on a black background. Once I map it on a black background, I am now going to use my green screen. I'm gonna to go to my full mode down here. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna give you a look behind the scene. Okay, I'm going to pick the right song for that. What is this song? Let me give you a look, a tour. Ready, set. Woo! That's my green screen. That's my room. And so now I'm lowering it. Now, how do I get this black background? How did I do that? Well, let me take you to a tool that does that. So I'm going to go once again, I'm going to go to my search window. And in this search window, I'm going to search for OBS software, OBS software. And then what you're going to see, you're going to get to this particular OBS platform. You can download it for Mac or for Windows, and it creates a green screen. That green screen is what I pull down on that. The OBS software recognizes that and it recognizes the source that we have, the video source, and it overlays. So what you're going to see is I have two layers. My first layer is my video, and my second layer is my backdrop, and they overlay. Because my screen right now is black on the background, and if I now go back to my presentation mode, once I drag, and you're going to see me literally do it, this OBS, I'm scraping my monitor, and so I'm now gonna fit that monitor right there. You see that gray area at the bottom here? There, right there. So now I'm gonna move that all the way up to the left. And as I move that, and as the, the picture in its scales, you start to see I get closer and closer. And once I do this, voila, it fits right into the screen. Because the slide is black, because I'm on a green screen, which through a chroma key has created it black, this black on black creates as if I'm in the picture. So now what I can do, I can do super cool things. Like I can do like as if I'm part of the picture or I can put myself inside the particular scene, right? Now I can create like, ah, I'm in the slide. And all this is, as you now know, is just a slide that sits up there. This creates an experience that, you know, like that we're trying to create because with this quality experience, we're engaging people. Down here, you see four specific overlays or four specific techniques. 
I'm creating an overlay to make straight eye contact with you so that you can see me in the eye. I create not PowerPoints, but I make myself part of the PowerPoints, creating this like, like engaging experience. I'm using a screen share where you see me search and on the right, I'm going deep with deep with content and explanation. All these are specific techniques that I'm demonstrating. For this, I use OBS. I use one more tool that I'm going to direct you to. In order for me, you see how does he maneuver so smoothly between these scenes? For that, I'm using what's called a Stream Deck. Stream Deck, it is a, it's such an incredible device. I cannot sp speak enough about it. What the Stream Deck is, is a little device that connects to your USB that allows you to do all kinds of things. It has a full on functionality with Zoom, for example, how you switch off your video, but it creates push buttons. So you have this active feedback. So I can push mute, push play a song, push change a scene, all this with a Stream Deck. Now I want to show you which Stream Deck I have. So I'm going to show you my specific Stream Deck. There it is. In this specific screen deck that I show you down here, here are my different scenes that I have. So right now, my left scene, this moves to my left monitor, shows me. If I push this button, then my video disappears. If I push this button, then my background disappears. Now I'm pushing this button on my USB device in front of me, physical contact. It may look, but I'll move my mouse out of the way so you see what I'm doing. Now, in this, I can also move. I'm now going to push the button to the right screen. So as soon as I push that, shoop, I am back there. This moving between scenes allows me now to create this smooth transaction for the advanced users who are looking to do something over the holidays, either over Thanksgiving or the Christmas holiday, this OBS software combined with a green screen, you're gonna have so much fun. These are what we learned from a company called Fullscreen, where we, whom we work with, who are seeing several of their uh, YouTube uh, uh, content creators being so effective in generating these experiences on the fly in real time. And I'm all doing this in one take, okay? No hesitance there. So this is a way on how you create that engaging visual experience. Next one, what we need to consider is how can we create a great chat experience? Either chat or a Slack channel or Microsoft Teams on the side where you're communicating with each other is a great way to engage. A few things that we have noticed down there, a few ways of being very effective is, number one, and as you see me do it, I'm gonna say, assign assign a dedicated person to that on the team okay this is important because the moment in time that you assign a dedicated person their role is to make sure that all the content is on there so for example if i link something if i provide a link share that link share the link to Stream Deck, for example, that I just promoted, just showed it to you. Not promoted, hands up, whatever I show you, we do not make any money on that. It's just purely like best practices that we're look, looking to share. Okay, so now I say share that link to Stream Deck, for example. Other thing is a listen to online question, listen to chat questions. So when people ask a question on the chat, you know, like that you take their voice and say, Jocko, may I interrupt? Uh, Mary Ann just ask question X, Y, Z. Listen to this chess cousin. Summarize. Summarize a key point. You know, like for you know, like uh, take a screenshot and share it. Like these are all active things on how you uh, effectively engage with the audience. And you, as a as a presenter, confirm the audience. So you want to make sure. Oh, um, uh, Sulin, I just saw that you uh, had this particular question. Let me address that. It means that you're paying attention, that you're listening to them. This is great engagement. And you know, what you'll see, the power of you know, whether it's Teams or Slack is that the content, content that's being shared goes into your standard Slack or Teams repository where you send, send it as part of your streaming, uh, sorry, as your, your, uh, your uh, screen share application. It often you know, like it goes away as soon as the session ends. So keep that in mind on where you want to share. We see often a better experience if we all decide to go to the Slack channel, for example. Okay, next what we have coming up is how do we engage? You see me using music very effectively. And I do that because I believe that, you know, again, think of the happiness factor. How are we gonna get people happy? Well, we gotta share some of this happy music. And I find that when I start adding music to it, the experience really changes. Ladies and gentlemen, hang on for one more session. 
The reason I say this is because we got a five minute break coming up right after the session. So stick with me. And with that, I'd like to introduce our next speaker of the day. Can I get a round of applause? Click, click and find your emoticon. Click on it, give a wild round of applause for our next speaker. And now I do an intro. Yes, it sounds DJ and gimmicky. Folks, you get three days of three hours. What do you think? They, got, they do Zoom sessions all day long. If you don't do this, it's boring. Engage positive mindset. We can do this. This is a great goal and objective. Get everybody happy and get them to engage with the content. And this little DJ interaction, it comes natural to me. I'm sure that there's somebody in your organization who loves to do this, who looks at this and go like, oh my God, look at that amateur Jocko. Let me show you what I can really do, right? Then they pull out their DJ set that you did not know that they have at home. Find that person, tap into that. That is going to be your peer helping this engagement. Next one up, how are we creating polling? We want to make sure that we create a form of polling. In order to create polling, there are certain tools that we can use. In this case, the specific tool that we're using, I want to show you is called Manimeter. Now with Manimeter, the great thing about this polling that it stands out from doing it in, in, in beforehand, it is real time. So when I, when I create a poll, I see my, my points fluctuate. People can use their phone or their web, web link and they can like go straight and vote on something. Folks, do you think we all should take a month off for the summer break? Should we close the company for the month of July or in the Southern Hemisphere? Should we close the, 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 the uh, I'm thinking about the laughter already. Should we close our company for two weeks before um, uh, Carnival and a week after? Everybody would say yes, absolutely. Let's close it. But this is where you can integrate a polling, a polling with real time results. You will see it go up. It measures actively what's going down. Mantimeter is one. There's probably many others that do that the same thing as well. This is how we create a polling real time experience. Often polling is best used for more official things, for decisions that need to be made. And again, involving our people in the decision creates an tremendous opportunity to create engagement. You got them all in this session. So this is essentially the key part that you actually engage them. This is the thing that you couldn't do if you sent them a video. These are the areas where we want to focus on. Can you engage them? Can you raise their voice? Can you create them, you know, like engage them in a the chat? Can we get them to participate in the conversation? This is not just me doing this. All of us are in this together. Another way and a more funny way of doing this is the form of gamification. Now where polling is really aimed at a serious thing, making decisions, voting in and out, what we see with gamification, it is more a funny way to recall a certain engagement, a certain traction. So for example, in this case, I'm going to show you a particular tool that we call Kahoot. That is known as Kahoot. Kahoot is more of a gamification platform. It has more of a fun element to it. And if I take a look in this particular Kahoot, so for example, you see some of the questions and how I can do this. I would go to this Kahoot with a link that is provided. I can click it in on my phone or on my desktop. And the experience that I get, you often get a game pin that is displayed. You know, here's go to the Kahoot site, log in this pin, boom, you're smack in the middle of it and you can vote on things. You can recall things. So in this case, we gave our audience a particular educational deep dive and it says like, hey, after two warm up questions, so people got it, we started creating, you know, like, can you measure rational impact? What describes impact the best? Now, what you see down here are seconds on the right. It's hard for you to read, but it indicates you get 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And every time you start answering these questions, it starts to rate you and it starts to create a platform and it starts to say who is a winner and who is a loser, not a loser, who's a winner. It gives you the top 10. It creates this gaming uh, experience. This is great. As I point out in this case, this is a great way because this is how we are able to entertain some of that thought. We just taught you something. Were you able to recall it? Remember, education. Well, let's see if they really got it, right? Now, next one up after gamification and so much more that you can do with that gamification. How do we get them to all these things? Jocko, I want to bring them to something. I want to show them something. How do I get them there? 
In this case, I'm going to show you how you can use a QR code. Now, a QR code is super simple to generate today. And again, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go QR code, QR code. Many of you may think, oh, I got to have this and it got to be trace links. Folks, none of that complexity. Down here is a QR code generator.com. I simply type in and let's say I want to go to the YouTube website, youtube.com slash winning by design. And the moment I create that, I'm going to create a specific QR code. I'm going to click on that right button, right control, copy image, go to the right. Obviously, you already seen that there. But if I now would copy and paste that down here, look at that. There's the QR code. Now, how do I activate that QR code? I'm going to go on this app. You see down here, voila, that is me. That's my camera looking at me, real, see? Now, I'm going to point that camera at the QR code. And as soon as I do that, it says open up at the top. And this works for both iOS as well as Android. I click on that. Voila, and it will open up the link. And this link can take us to whatever we want. I encourage you to use your phone to point at this and see where it will take you, right? And you know, like you'll, you can now create engagement with the content. Obviously, you can push also the link inside the chat, but this makes them do something. They still have to pull out their phone. Their phone is no longer being used for XYZ. It's now using for, for, for this. Folks, think about what I just did. This excitement that I now have created, look at that. All this can be used to accomplish something. I gave you a whole bunch of tips. The great thing about this particular thing now is, is what can we do with it? What excitement can we create with this moving forward? For that, I certainly have some ideas which I'm going to share with you next. Let's roll the shoulders. Let's get this going. We can do this. Yeah, there we go. Now let's go and innovate with this. Let's use this to do something that has never been done before. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going we're going matrix style. We're going, you know, like think about us. We're going to bend Time. Think with me along, okay? I'm going to bend time for you. Historically, the problem with these events was that the annual kickoff, the sales kickoff, the team kickoffs were all pushed into a specific location. Think Las Vegas, for example. Think London or Amsterdam. We were traveling everybody down there. And because of the cost involved and the time involved of all this, we made them annual. Since we're doing a remote, all the limitations of remote, both financially, but also time-wise, are gone. Time has become a different element. And so now what we see, that flatline that we historically had towards that backend, is no longer needs to be flat. We no longer need to think of this as a one-time event. What we need to think of this as, how often do our people need this? How often is it? Is it every quarter, every month? Now, of course, you, you want to you know, do it within reason. How, how much time and effort can you put into this? What we see the need is for these events, these remote kickoffs, under the current fluctuating situation in the world where political, social, health, everything, everything is constantly fluctuating, we believe that quarterly is a good place to start. Now, what we are going to see in the, uh, per quarter, once we think of our annual sales kickoff and spread it out over four quarters, it becomes a total different thought process. What do we do? What are the sessions and so on? Not only can we push it over the quarters, we can interlace it every month with a shorter update, an asynchronous update. What we are going to see, some content like voting, we really want everybody together. Therefore, the, the quarterly is really valuable. While others, if I just want to share something with you, a new product launch, and I just want to share the product launch, there's no, no reason for me to wait. I can just put that anytime, launch at any time I want, but we could argue that there's a monthly schedule that we launch that with. This indicates that some content really benefits from this real-time engaged behavior where all of us meet at the same time, and there's other things that may way more benefit, benefit from not being real-time. This indicates that we need to look at some of these key things that we have done over the past. 
Now I'm going to start since it's already at the bottom. What the great thing is of an annual kickoff or a quarterly kickoff, it gives a rallying date. It says, oh, we're launching new product. It tells all the departments inside the company to get ready at that point in time. And often a lot of effort is being pushed in the Christmas holidays to get that content prepared, for example, for a launch in January. That still occurs the same thing. All that is still the same. Where we can make a difference is when we start seeing, for example, education. Now, some of you may say, oh my gosh, the education, actually, Jocko, what is the difference between doing that on a sales kickoff, annual sales kickoff or a remote kickoff? Well, we find that the sales kickoff, that historically the training was not ideal to do that. This is because people were hung over, hanging out with each other. This part was great, hanging out with each other. The problem was they were not paying attention. Second, we crushed so much educational content in that one to three day event, people were overwhelmed. And so true education does not take place like that. When you spread this out over multiple events, then you can create a way better experience. Now, what I'm going to do, that little house, oh, well, it looks like a house, but you may think, Jocko, I have no idea what it is. That is supposed to look like a house. That training is better done in the comfort of a house, of your own house, of your own room. And so this RKO training is better done when we do it remote. We are create a higher frequency of training with smaller nuggets that are being distributed over time. The same thing we see with networking. Now networking, we have historically have seen one of the great impacts that these annual kickoffs had is people got together. You finally got to meet the person. You shook a hand. You spent, you know, like what seemed to be some, you know, like coffee time with them. But that was so needed. How are we going to do that? Folks, this ain't easy. We are not going to redo that. It's not that way. We got to think differently about that. So in our case, for example, our head of HR has created, uh, you know, like a walking competition. We've now created group inside the companies and we're competing, walking with each other. We have dance classes, we have game nights. We create several of these socialized events. Now, what I want you to distinguish here is the two different kinds of social events. One or more the fun part, where, are more, where people get to know each other in a non-working environment. But equally important is the grouping of groups that think the same. In our case, we have sales architects, we have the sales trainers. They too need to socialize with each other. And Dan, for example, our chief academic officer, brings the trainers together and have them share best practices and so on and so forth. In this remote world, this socialization is now taking place differently. We can no longer rely on the annual kickoff to kickstart that. And we may, what we can do in our annual kickoff or in, our, in this quarterly kickoff, we can point out to all the different things. Here's the Slack groups or here's the Teams groups. Here's some of the things that we have coming up. This winter, we're going to do game night. In the summer, we're going to have like, you know, we'll have a walking uh, competition. Similarly, the awards. The awards were always a key part. At the beginning of the year, we would celebrate the top performers of last year. What we notice today is that the celebration, why wait till the end of the year? Why not celebrate right now? So for example, you see win channel or celebration channel is way more common these days where we are rewarding and recognizing those who win something or made a significant progress in advance of the company and help with that, that we can recognize them on the spot, whether that is through like a Slack channel, creation of a video, sharing via emails, but we can no longer wait for these awards to be annual. What is holding us back to you know, like recognize people monthly or quarterly? We would recognize more people for all the work they do. Great, there's so much great stuff going on. Let's, let's do it more often. One of the hardest ones that we are, have been struggling with, one of these most challenging ones is, oops, is this one particular one, the cultural fingerprinting that takes place. The cultural fingerprinting historically is when new employees join and they walk around in the company, they get the vibe, they talk to people, they see, oh my gosh, these Dutch people, they're pretty transparent and pretty blunt and they get to understand that that in the Dutch culture is greatly appreciated. Or they go into Brazil where they're part of hugging and, and shaking hands and physical contact and they go like, oh my gosh, I love this. That makes me feel like part of the family, very, very Brazilian. And what the other cultures like, or they see how, what the food is and how people share thoughts over dinner and coffees. 
This cultural fingerprinting is super important to create a group of people with a common, on a common mission with a common goal. This challenge is really tough to tackle. What we can do and what we start to see is how CEOs and leaders more and more share certain ideas and you know, like on, like on a Slack channel, we for example, show pictures, we share best practices, we share things that went on on the weekend. This is a form of cultural fingerprinting, but there's much more to it. And I don't believe we fully tackled it. I don't want to make you believe like, oh, they got that figured out. We don't. This is important. Living in a remote world has brought many different ways. One of the easy ones that is recognizable to us down here, when we see any one of our uh, um, members of the company bring their child in, we celebrate that. We celebrate any child that joins in on it. And like they can have on the lap sitting there and so on. Dogs, welcome. Cats, you know, super welcome. Like we bring everybody in. We believe that having a remote workplace needs to give us, you know, like we need to recognize and celebrate when that workplace shows us the cultural background behind the person. This motivation and encouragement, essentially, I want to give you a heads up. That was great that we did that, you know, like when we we're all together, clapping, having a, a, a great keynote speaker. We can do equally well in these quarterly remote sessions. Or, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to encourage. You can bring in external speakers on a specific topic. Very, very powerful. For example, I saw the other day, John Saley, can I see if I can find him somewhere online? But John is a great speaker that you can bring in. So I'm gonna to go to John, let's see where is John. Let's find him, John, I spoke to him yesterday. John Selig, there is his name. Now, John is you know, half sales guy, half stand-up com comedian. He gives great you know, experiences, motivational and stuff like that, putting things in practice but at the same time, helping you realize how can you start a conversation in a, not, in a, not, not in a funny joking way, but in a relaxing way, in a world that is very tensed. How can you use a semi joke to break the ice? He can way better describe it, but I'm a big fan of starting the conversation with a positive mindset and John can help you do that. That is a way on how we can today motivate and encourage by sharing you know, people like John and sharing his, his or her best practices across the team and do it more often, not just once a year. As I start, um, um, as I end, I start at the same point. Let us not realize, let us not forget that many of these things are all help us by creating target dates, rallying dates around. That will remain in play and we can still use that not only once a year, but multiple times a year. Okay. That has me coming to a close on where I want to go with you today. What I want to describe to you, I want to let you read this particular sentence and I'll put some music on in the background, okay? Here we go. Read this, please. Folks, all these techniques and all this stuff is being readily available to us. Many younger generations are making Lots of money with this. Think of our YouTubers. This is all standard stuff, standard thinking. We just never thought of it that way. We never, it was right there for us to be seen, but we missed it. No longer coming 2021, we can use all these basic tools that I just presented to you as a way, not just to pro uh, promote and progress the business objectives of a company, but let's share the excitement that we have. Many of these people that we are working with have formed communities. Many companies are communities. These communities are bonded together with work. And it is at no doubt that for many people, these companies, these communities that companies have formed are their lifeline to sanity, to excitement. If we use some of these techniques, I believe that we can create this new, exciting future, distribute that to them, help them, because we as business professionals, we are the frontline workers in 2021. As COVID re hopefully resides as a result of the vaccine, the economy is dependent on us. And with that, we would be ready to do that. I believe that this is the opportunity we are being given. We are being given that opportunity to promote for, to create these cultures, to share this happiness. 
If you would love to learn more, I would recommend that you visit our YouTube channel. I have on the YouTube channel lots of this content, you know, like readily available for you, where you can see all this, this unique material, you know, videos, training, and so on. This is all created by the, all, all my fellow colleagues at Winning by Design. There's no reason why you should not have any access to this information. It's public. We share this. We believe in this open source model. We share this all publicly with you. And with that said, I want to say thank you very much for having me. Thank you for listening. I'm looking much forward to see how you get on with all this and, and hope that there's the excitement came across. 2021 is the year that we can all make a difference. And I'm looking forward to seeing you make that difference.